Anyway, if you saw me last video, you'd have seen me using this in that exact setting, putting some blocks on the mini mill. Well, I've used that exact setup, and here it is. I don't know if I can get a very good picture of this because it's all a bit tight, but we've got an angle plate. And that's the setup. So we'll zoom you in a little bit and show you what we've done. At the back here, this is a T knot, as you can see, and it's butt up against the back of it, and it's drawn in there. Here, I have a bolt run into the one, two, three bolt uh, block, uh, block, and I have an aluminium wedge, and the G clamp is basically holding that block against this block and stopping this from moving at all. This is doing absolutely nothing. It was going to do something that's doing nothing apart from going to rattle if I left it in there. This is the setup block which is set at 10 degrees. Everything else is aligned to it. This time I've left a gap here. The reason I left the gap here is because the gaps on the on the angle plate don't quite line up how I want them to, so I've had to push the block back a little bit. That hasn't made a difference. The angle block is not held down at all, apart from the fact it's been pushed down by that toe clamp. This toe clamp is quite dangerous as it is not held very well. See, the T knot is not held very well. The other two T knots are perfect. But that T-knot is useless. I made some custom bolts for them. Uh, threaded all the way down, just uh, M12 threaded rod. Turned down to 6mm and then threads put down the whole length of them on that one and for the first inch and a half on this one. So now this should be parallel to this. Now you're going to be able to see that straight away. I haven't got, got a clue. So here is the upgrade for the mini mill. It has got 45 millimeters extra Y and 130 millimeters extra X. And I need to make an adapter plate because that's 155 millimeters wide and the original mill was 110 millimeters wide so let's go and have a look at that so there we have it the new setup of death I don't know if there's enough clamps on there at the moment we shall see it is not tight this is just loose I've just come to the fact that I can put me M12 converters on and that makes things easier it's amazing how much easier those, those things make it so the plan of action for this one obviously is to line up where I want the hole here drill for the clearance hole then I might still have enough room for the boring head in there so a little ceiling horizontal and vertical cooking bandsaws isn't made like what it should be this piece is exactly six inches and six inches wide this so there's a couple of reasons why and the noise in the background is the stand that I'm making for it Right, so there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. One, we have broken handles, okay? They cost money to replace. These look ugly. That one just broke off again. I just bodged some screws into it and put a JD roll around it. It is undoubtedly going to break again. There's no doubt about it. The plastic, they're crap. So I need new handles. That 
XY table has brand new handles that have never been fractured by misuse, or well, not yet anyway. So it comes with those. Second, I like this little mill, it's very handy to use, it's on the bench, uh, you know, it, it's, it's good. It only cost me 40 English pounds. I modified it by putting that motor on which cost I think 70 or 90 pounds and that which cost 40 pounds which increases the power of this mill considerably I upgraded it to a cam belt took the gears out completely and it's very good it has a couple of short falls one is although you've got 220 millimetres of travel. Okay. Although you've got 220 millimetres of travel, I could bury that end mill into that bed with that amount to stick out on it. You don't want that. It's very rare that you're going to come down that close to the bed, if at all. And if I'm going to be, I can put an EO32 collet chuck in, extending that a little bit, and then hold collets in that. True, I could do with more height though, because 6mm is about the biggest drill that I can fit into a chuck and have a voice on and do any kind of meaningful work. Once you go up into 8 and 10mm drills, I have to put a collet in. So I put this 10mm collet in, and I put a drill directly in it and then you still struggle. So a little bit of extra Z height wouldn't go amiss. In fact, I was looking at doing that. The other thing is the X and Y travel are a little bit limited. They're, they're, it's, pretty, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's ample for a little mill, it is, it is good enough. But you could always do with a little bit more. So, oh, especially for that voice, that's a four inch voice. This only has safely that travel. So if we give it the full, the full beans, let's give it the full beans. So as you can see, you're off the end of the gibbs now. You're off the end of the gibbs. So that is the travel you have. And that is unmeasurable because I don't have a measuring device here. Yes, I do. That is 150 millimetres. I think the book quotes it as something else. Well, let's just say that's 150. I think it quotes it at 200. 150. Out there. Oh, you're muted. The gibbs get a bit tight out there. And you can see why this handle breaks off because when it gets stuck, you just end up pulling on it and it rips it off. And it's getting to the point of breaking off. I've already repaired it a couple of days ago. So I think we had 150 back then, and you can wind it off about the same amount on the other side. And then the lead screw disengages. So I'll say that's a safe amount there. So yeah, about another, so I think 200 millimetres is what they quote it at. The other one has 140 millimetres of cross travel. Sorry, 3... 440? 340 of travel, so you get an extra 100 and three, it quotes an extra 130 mil, whatever that works out at. Yeah, 200 to 330, 130 mil extra. So, that table would still be on the job lot here. In fact, it comes out to about, about here. Where's my hand? It comes out to about here. So, me, me new shroud is going to be modified again, but not to worry, that's, that's the least of my problems. 
hand doors was one of them. So not a problem. So that was the other thing. And then also it's a bit light. So that base is 30 kilograms, which is about 60 pounds, the new base. This whole machine is 42 kilograms <laughs> with the original motor on it. So that whole new base is nearly as heavy as this whole machine. And the top end is not a light thing to, to pick up on its own without the motor on. So, you know. I should imagine we're going to go from 42 kilograms up to around about, mm, I don't know, 60 kilograms. I should imagine that top bit's better. I'm sure it's going to double its weight, add in some mass, and I want to get some extra Z height. Now with that Z height block that I am fitting, I am going to put a back brace on it as well and I'm going to put some drill some holes in it and then I'll put some more back bracing on it to stiffen up the column a bit more give it a bit more rigidity at present with the Gibbs locked like that if I press down here I've just took a cut and I put the milling cutter above it so it isn't touching, so you know, it's clear. I can press here and make it touch the part. So I want to stop that from happening and all that movement that you see in there is because it's attached to a wooden base. So I want to stop that from happening, definitely. Now the other thing is, look where the table's come to. We have to this on this on this particular problem here. The table, at its fullest extent, doesn't get to the cutter. The cutter can cut there, but if I take it off to the side, the, 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 oh, it's a bit tight on that side. There we go. It's coming now. Here she comes. Now she's off the Gibbs. Now I think you'll agree with me, I don't know if you can get a good shot of that. But that head, it could be going that way a bit, couldn't I? So I can give myself a little bit more wide travel by doing all this, what I'm doing. And to make it, so I mean, when that voice is on, it's, it's that wide from the end. And the voice, about comes to here and I would like to have the voice overhanging the edge so using these centre slots I'd like to use that slot there and then put a toe clamp on this side so when I'm putting this column on to the other new unit I will make sure that I get a few extra well, centimetres of why travel backwards? That way I can cut to the end of the bed here and get off the end of the bed. Well, I should be able to get off the end of the bed here and off the end of the bed there on the other one. And hold the vices where I want to hold the vices, which is in that slot pinched down and that slot there pinched down to, to get a better a better hold. So just having two bolts on it. So I'm killing loads of I'm killing loads of birds with one stone basically. All that stone will be waffling. It's cutting through. I could have set it a little bit uh, further this way. Nah, not, uh, not a big problem. So I'll move all the way. zoom in. And here. Right, 
the cut on this was going well and there's one of the bits and here's another one of the bits here which came off clearly not off that bit so when they came off they were slightly skewed and I started the second cut down the second side and I measured across it and well it was less than 110 millimeters and 110 millimeters is my minimum width that I want although I might change my mind <laughs> you know how things go anyway the first cut went so well although it was a bit skewed I thought I'd let this second cut go on its own you know, the first cut didn't stop at all, it just went straight through. So I put the second cut on and let it go straight through. It didn't. Hence we've got some fan belt there and another snapped blade. Awesome. Don't leave your saw unattended. <laughs> Yep, there's another one snapped. These things are absolutely rubbish. So I was just about to set up to show you that I'm moving off of zero here. I was going to move in the amount that was required to move that to four and a half millimetres off of that flap there, so I was going to draw a 9mm hole in there and show it on video, but now it's not going to happen. Okay, so I've got maximum depth just above the 9mm ring hole. I've got the tension on, so there's this tension here, so it doesn't spring back up again, it stays wherever you put it. Um, so it makes it a bit more rigid. I've got it set to, the initial cut is around about a millimetre, so it's going to be pretty difficult going for the little machine. Let's see how the initial cut goes. Cut. I've just got to bring that out to 17 millimetres now. Put the finger in here if I can get that focus. But I've got to bring that out to about 17 millimetres now to give clearance for the tall body. Let's go and have a look at the saw job. And well, this is what's making all the noise in the background there. I've just done that 9 millimetre ring hole and now I'm going to do some boring. Okay, we're back and it doesn't quite work, it comes to a stop there. I'm not sure if that's going to be okay. Not quite. It would have been good if the stop had been a bit further past, but this one web obviously is a little bit higher than the rest of them. So that's a 9mm ring hole and it fits beautiful. There's a bit of rock in it. But the plan is getting better all the time. And the cutting is really done. And this is still in my hand from doing all that testing. There we go. Okay, well, I was going to take a little bit out, but I took a lot out. 
there's definitely clearance there now, 100% clearance there now. The reason why a lot came out was because the little boring head went into auto adjust mode. Now, it's not advertised as having auto adjust. We'll just show you the kit. Oh, here we go. It's coming into view. Oh my word, it's one handed, everything's no drop. Move out of the way. There we go. She's in shot. So, this is the kit. It's a 50mm MT2. I've also got an R8 Arbor for it as well. And it's not advertised as having an auto adjust mode, but I can guarantee you at 5000 RPM in this thing, when it's offset by around about 8mm, which it was. <laughs> and the vibration starts going it auto adjusts itself it takes the backlash out of the uh, the lead screw inside it so it went from a half mil cut it looked like it was taken around about a two mil cut and that is why the gap there is so massive i didn't want it to be that massive i wanted it to be hold on oh i wanted it to be tight hugging there we go. Can we get some folk? There we go. So I wanted that to be a tight hugging fit, but we have about two millimeter gap. So there we go. Yeah, it did that in one. <laughs> Here it is in the dingy light with some numbers written on it. So that is. Minus two thousandths of an inch, and that is plus two thousandths of an inch, uh, plus eight thousandths with a zero there at the top, which is sort of going with that. Now, the way I got the minus two and the plus two was I used a square, which is in your square box to set a zero and that it works then I use a one two three block so the one two three block that's why it's so low because the square was up here obviously but the one two three block is down there anyway that is the block of cast iron which I'm going to use let's pivot it nicely use for the riser block for the milling machine and I've run this across the top and it is in within, within a couple of tenths all the way around apart from this front corner here which I don't know if I'll be able to show you I'm trying to zoom in onto it, can you see all that patination at the front here, all this, all this patination here well here it drops down by a thousandth over the rest of the surface which is around about two or three tenths parallel to the other side when that's resting on this surface plate. Okay, let's go and have a look at the adapter plate that this is going to bolt to to bolt to the mill. So, as you can see, I've cut one side already. It's not quite straight. It's not bad. I'm wrapping it on the mill. Let's go and have a look at the mill machine. So this is the setup I've been using to square up that cast iron block and these are just some angle brackets off a machine that's what I'm using as angle plates and I used the 123 block to try and square it up, it was quite a way out and I clamped it against the 123 block and I got against those and I got it to within well, 8,000th of an inch of squareness over six inches so I don't think I did too bad but anyway that's the setup I used a couple of G clamps and I'm going to be working on this again soon I tried to use a fly cutter but as usual it just burns it up on this machine I can't run this machine slow enough at the moment to run a fly cutter and it just does this to high speed steel I tried a really aggressive rake on this one to try and negate it, but 
it just burns up the edge of it. Can you see that? That's why it's shimmering at the edge. Well, that's supposed to be a radius. It's a flat now. So I can't use that. Anyway, soon the mini mill will be increased in bed width to about out here somewhere. And that amount of travel wouldn't have had that coming off the new bed. The new bed's got that much extra support on it. So we've seen this whole pattern. It's part of the new XY table for the mini mill, okay? So this is the Clark CMD 10 or equivalent of the Sieg SX1 micro miller machine. Let's have a pan down on it. Oh man, look at that. There we go. So you can still see the spindle here and you've got the bed. The block of cast iron on it. Now the bed is 124 millimeters, sorry, 240 millimeters wide and 145 millimeters wide, so say 240 long, 145 wide. The new bed is 145 and 400 I think, yeah, or 440. So I'm going to gain that amount. So I'm going to get that much more real estate on top. It has an extra 45 millimeters of travel. So that would bring me out to here, past where the handle is. Oh, must have dropped my... Uh... Oh man, it's broken. Must have dropped it. Anyway, that's upsetting. I'm really upset I've got that for a long time. Anyway, so this block of cast iron here was a Renault vibration damper. Yes, they bolt two of these lumps of cast iron to some Renaults to stop vibrations inside the car. And they weigh quite a bit. They are heavy. I'll weigh one. I'd say around about 7 to 10 kilograms, I should imagine. Although it might be 5. <laughs> it's heavy. That's about 10 to 20 pounds, somewhere in that region there. For all those people that use Old English measurements, I don't know why. We've all gone French now. Anyway. So, we'll block a cast iron there and the top surface is parallel to the bottom surface within around about three ten thousandths of an inch, yes, inch scales, about one hundredth of a millimetre all over the top there, apart from this little corner at the front here, where it drops down to... Um, yeah, sorry, three hundredths of a millimeter. So it goes from a thousandth of a millimeter and then drops down to further down another hundredth of a millimeter, another three, two and a half hundredths of a millimeter. Anyway, these are thousandth measurements here. So you've got two minus one point eight. And what they represent is the out of squareness of the sides. So although this surface here is parallel, it is that way, so it's parallel, but it's that way two thousandths basically, halfway down. So at the top here it's four thousandths over that way. which doesn't seem like a great amount, <laughs> it isn't a great amount, but it isn't quite square. It's close, but it's not quite, it's a bit of an isosceles, it's a bit of a, whatever you call those, parallelogram thing, where it sort of like comes up at an angle like that, exaggerated. And the top, the two top, you know, the top of the bottom parallel. 
And the two sides are parallel, it's just it's tipped over a little bit. Anyway, apart from there being two thousandths of move four thousandths of movement that way from top to bottom. top and the bottom surface are perfect. Now this is just wide enough to be able to clamp the column to it and the first bit of this gear is really tight. Very rarely use that bit of travel because it's hard to use, although I do use it. So I think you can now see the bottom of the column coming, yeah you can see the whole of the bottom of the column. So that those four bolts there have got to go and I've got to draw a whole pattern in the top here. No, uh, 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 not there. <laughs> I've got to draw a whole pattern in there to accept that. But first, I need to draw a whole pattern in this side to meet up with that. So let's go handheld to demonstrate this. The head is touching the table. And we are off the scale. We are at 11. Let's see if I can zoom in on that and show you. So it, it describes 220 millimeters. And we are clearly, you know, so that's uh, 40. Well, that's another 50 centimetres, that's another 50 millimetres off of it, isn't it? Well, actually, it's about another 40, but we're touching, and if we're looking at the, the ways, see the ways there? I still have about another 50 millimetres left of ways for travel. The only limiting factor is if I can show you on the back. Yeah, so we've run out of lead screw. So that's the lead screw. So I could extend the lead screw, which comes up to the top handle there. Quite hard to explain. Coming out a bit. There's the lead screw handle, and that goes way down the back of the column, then goes into the bottom of it. And it's, uh, it's just about to drop out. I don't want to go any further down than that. Well, I can't, but I don't want to, otherwise, there'll be no threads left. So there we go. What will it end up like? I think I'm going to have to extend the lead screw. So I will do that in this fashion. I think we can get a good look at the lead screw there. And well, as you can see, that lead screw is that length and that is it. I don't see as though I can get any more out of that by extending the top. I need more threads, simple as. That might be the first ball screw I'll go for. It's a nice little trapezoidal thread down there. But I think we might be taking this block to pieces, i.e. cutting it off and putting a, a ball screw on this and getting a longer ball screw shaft and then changing this to a ball screw straight away. So, like I was saying, it's very rare that you're going to want to have the nose touching the table. The shortest possibilities are like this. Got a quarter inch collet and a broken end mill. We'll just pretend that's an end mill sticking out its ankle and end mill length. And that would be sticking out the chuck by, let's say, three centimetres. So you'd want three centimetre clearance for a start. So we're getting towards, we've got 40, and then 160. So we've got 100 mil left. Then you'd want a part on top. And the likelihood that you're going to be milling right next to the table is, well, clearly someone did. 
you know, someone wanted to mill into the table because they already have. <laughs> so it wasn't me, it was like this when I bought it. Anyway, the likelihood that you're going to want to mill into the table is minimal. Unless you're a spastic. And the chances of you holding something down to the table and then milling it till there's nothing left is unless you're a complete and utter head case minimal so let's say the smallest fixture plate that you'd have underneath it for protection would be let's say 10 mil it's now up to 40 mil so we're definitely in the realms of 100 millimeters now we can't get within 100 millimeters of the table but if I want to get closer to the table for anything any, anything in the future, which is using an end mill or any kind of thing, <laughs> I could put an ER32 MT2 holder in there and hold in the mills and that will give me another five or six centimeters getting me even closer to the uh, milling table. So I should imagine the furthest I'll be able to get towards it with this situation is probably going to be around about six centimeters underneath it. So doing mill table work may become difficult. Now if it does, I have a plan of action for that. If it becomes difficult, and it most certainly could. Now I can set it up back in the bridge port. So I'm, do I'm doing all this work by the way on the mini mill. I can set this back up in the bridge port, this part, and see what that space is with the ER32 in it and a, and a smallest end mill. and just get it so I can get the smallest end mill and touch the table but I don't think I'm ever going to be able to need to do that so I'm leaving it at this 170 centimeters because it gives me 320 millimeters of clearance in between now if I put a drill, drill chuck in for instance I've already lost that amount and then by the time I put a drill in <laughs> the point I'm going to get to is I'm definitely going to be able to drill into the table so that's bad you don't want that to happen but this much extra space is a longer drill if you see what I'm saying I think you get the gist of what I'm doing here I am now going to proceed to drill these four holes all together and get on with it so the drilling and tapping went nearly eventless. <laughs> the first punch I made was my old steel. I couldn't tell it was in my mystery steel pile. It came out of a printer. I thought printer rods would be at least chrome millennium. Clearly not. So then I got a piece of silver steel out, made a new 6mm punch for my hole finding centre punch and did that. Work it out so you can see it a bit. So I've stoned down the, what should I say, a diamond plated down the surface here. Not entirely sure how flat and level this surface is yet. That will have to wait. I'm not doing it yet. It's going to be good enough for what I'm doing right now, which is drilling four holes. So I shall drill the four holes on the other side. These are not torqued yet. I will torque them in. I've got some high tensile bolts. Are these? I thought I would put stainless in these. I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to put some 12.9 grade um, high tensile bolts in here. And I'll torque them up. They'll stretch a little bit. So I'll bring them up to 68 plus 90. 68 newton meters. A bit 48. I think 48 newton meters plus 90 degrees. I'll talk these two with some grade 9 bolts which will stretch a little bit when you when you talk onto them. So I'll do those as stretch bolts. Now 
I've just got to your side. I'll weigh this in a minute. Well, not in a minute. I'll weigh this shortly. On my scales and see how much more weight I'm putting in there. We'll see what we're taking away. So now you can see it's full splendor and it is all bolted together now, so it lifts up. Let's see how she hinges right in the centre. So the plate is bowed. They will probably have to attend to that. Doesn't matter too much because the gullet is taken out in the centre. I might flip it up. See what the land sizes are on the other and take out 0.1 millimeter. I doubt it. I think I want to angle grind scrape it now. I think that's close enough where I can just angle grind scrape that now. Now you will see one of the advantages of having this. I'm going to try and put my drill chuck in here and I can't get it in. It doesn't matter which way I put it, it's two pieces, so what's going on? I just can't get that in. I've got to get the whole part out of the way. Just to get it in. And now I've only really got enough height to centre drill. Well, I think I'm probably fast forwarded through all that indicating there. And what I found was this back face here is not perfectly parallel to these sides. So I must have measured it off the front face. I don't know how I got it out. But it seems if I line the sides up perfectly and end for end it's five thou out. 
But if I line the front end up, then these end for end of fourth hour out. I don't get that. I don't get that at all. But I think the two ends are parallel to each other. So, I am going to spin the block round. And when I spin the block round, I had a zero measurement here, went up to plus 13. And then I had a zero measurement back here, went up to plus 17. So there's obviously, there's 4,000 more on this side than what there is this side. So the block tapers a little bit. Not by much, four thousandths, but by the white tape is a little bit. So I am going to try and line that block up better. <laughs> so it's more like two thousand for end. Yep, I'm going to try and do that. So the two sides are good. Alright, I know it's back on the other way. I measured from end to end on the other side and it's bowed in the centre. And then I get a 3,000 end to end variation on both sides. Now I measure this side end to end and it's more or less flat all the way down, apart from a little bit here, around about here. You can see where I, I milled all of this in one and then I, I milled that after. Anyhow, that is more or less level all the way down, apart from a little defect here. And I get 4,000 end for end. So these sides were never parallel to that end. So I'm guessing that end was off. Now when I milled this, obviously I milled it with just that end flat down to the surface. And this is pretty much perfectly parallel to that side there. So anyway, I've squared it up over this side here, because it's milled clean. And then I've twisted this block a little bit. I've just clocked it in, and this side is perfectly parallel to that there. And this side is two thousands off. So it's pretty close, but this side is bang on parallel. So if I want to put any attachments on, this is the side to do it on. I've got to try and remember. I think that kicked off, it did, I'm on zero. Right, pull that out, stop the machine. So I know I'm on zero now. Yeah, you're agreeing with me on that one. And I know that is 5.08 millimeters. Let's kick that off to that side there so I can see more or less where it is. So we'll do, we'll do the math as I go along so I don't do something stupid like miscalculate it. So we've got 5.08 mil. 5.08. Then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, bit past 58 that is 59 turns exactly I'll bring it back down again now I'm making sure that I don't do more than one rotation on the way back so I've got 59 turns and that is one rotation put the backlash out So that's the kickoff. Well, right, let me just say, that has kicked off now. I don't know if we can see that. Let's just see that. Get a bit closer on that. Yeah, are we, are we seeing that? Maybe. Let's just get a better frame on that than that. A bit better lighting. Let's get some better lighting on the subject. 
Oh, let's knock the camera, I bet that's out of focus now. Yes it is. Let's put you back into frame. Oh, there we go. Now I've got some better lighting on it. So I hope you can see that's kicked out now. Well, that's kicked out in the opposite direction to where I kicked it out before. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start the machine back up, but I'm going to turn it back so it goes off. And as soon as it goes level, that is the point. And we've just gone past the 58 mark. We're within 58 now. I'm going to take the backlash out now. And we'll see whether it is 58 or not. So we're just waiting for that kick out to go back to level. And that's it, right there. So that's gone completely parallel now, all the way around. And we are 58 and 5 ticks, just under 5 ticks. Go back out again. So down on the scale, so we're going to zoom in on that. Oh, this might be possible. Down on the scale down there. So it's not quite five. It's just under five. You've got a parallax. It is close to five than what you think it is there because of the parallax. It's uh, not quite level where the camera is, but you get the idea. Yeah, I'll agree with that, I think. Then I've got. 58 turns and 58 just double that that'd be 116 I think we'll look at that 116 so we've got 116 right I've done some complex mathematics <laughs> oh dear it was a subtraction by the way so I got confused taking two 508s off of it, don't need to do that, you take two halves of the 508s off of it, so it's just 508 you take off of it. So the measurement was 116.10, and you take off the 5.08, so it ends up at 111.02. Pretty happy at that. Okay, what was I doing? Drilling holes. So now I'm just going to edge find off here, come in the desired amount here, and put a hole in, and then put another hole in, and put another hole in, and put another hole in. I'm quite happy at where it is. So it'll be just too much showing you all that, and I think you've seen people drill holes before, and I just wanted to show you how I measure things and how I'm going to find out where these top holes are going.